Hey guys, I'm Pat. In this video, we'll be going over remote events and remote functions. And I highly recommend you understand uh, the client and server relationship before watching this video because we're going to be assuming that you know that. When I go over remote events in this video, it's very necessary for understanding them. So hopefully you understand that. And the first thing I'm going to start off with doing is I'm going to put a local script inside of starter player scripts. Uh, this is a very good place to store your local scripts that aren't related to like GUI or tools. You want you can store them in starter player scripts. It's a good spot for it. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the player service. And we're going to get the local player. Or we can just call this player. And the last thing is we're going to get the mouse. Now, what the mouse object is, is basically get mouse is a method of player instance and just returns the mouse object. This is only usable on a local script as far as I'm aware, the same as like local player, because mouse is kind of like an input thing, so it needs to be on a local script for it to really detect input. And you can use mouse for like keyboard input and all that, but it's kind of deprecated. But just for this example, I'm going to be using it to detect uh, mouse button one down. Because what I want to do for our script is make a script that pretty much uh, uh, like detects a player clicking. And it'll destroy the part that they click. So it's really going to be a pretty simple script. So the way we're going to get the part that they click. So button one down is just an event that fires when obviously button one is down. Button one would just be left click. Button two would be right click so we're just connecting that to a function so when the mouse button one is clicked we're going to get the part that it's targeting which is just mouse that target which returns you can see right here the object in 3d space the mouse is pointing to so it just returns the part that the mouse is pointing to in workspace and then we're just going to destroy the part all right so now what we're going to do is uh, add a few parts to workspace for us to destroy. I'm not used to these new icons. I thought it would be a good idea to switch over, but I don't know if I like them too much. But we're going to add a few parts for us to destroy here. I'm just using Control D to quickly duplicate some parts. And we'll go ahead and run it and give it a try and see what work happens, right? So now... If I go ahead and left click, you see all the parts I click destroy, even the base plate. But if I go ahead and switch over to the server view, you'll see all the parts are actually still here. And this is, of course, because we are destroying them in a local script. So the changes are only client side. You see, we switch back here, and it's just like everything's gone. But in the server, it hasn't seen any changes. So all the other players wouldn't see this. So if we want to pretty much tell the server, hey, we want to destroy these parts and we want all the players to see us destroying these parts, then we're going to have to use a remote event. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go into replicated storage and we're going to create a folder. And inside our folder, or we're going to call our folder remotes, right? And you don't need a remotes folder inside of replicated storage, but I highly recommend it because it helps you organize your game objects, especially if you have a lot of remote uh, events. Not a remote function, when I remote event. And we'll rename our remote event just like uh, destroy a part, pretty much. And now what we'll do is we'll add a server script to our server script service. And inside of our server script is we'll listen for when the remote event fires. So the way a remote event works pretty much is that you can either fire it from a local script to the server or you can fire it from the server to the local script. So really it's just an event that you can trigger inside of a script. And the opposite, uh, I don't know what you call it, like the opposite can receive it. So like the server can receive the client firing it and the client can receive the first server firing it. It's not like server to server or client to client. It's either server to client or client to server with the remote, right? So now inside of here, we're going to reference our remote. This is kind of an ugly way of destroying it, but it's okay. 
And now since this is a server script, we're going to be listening for the server event because that's when we fire it to the server. And there we go, that's pretty much it. So once the event is fired, it will trigger this event here, which will call this function. Now, something that we're not necessarily using right now, but something I should mention is that for the on server event, it will automatically pass the player to the server, the player instance that called it. So the player that owned the local script that called the remote event, right? So it will pass the player that fired it automatically, which means that it will always be the first argument here. So another thing with remotes is you can also pass more than just, you can pass like as much data as you want, just as if it was like a normal function. So you can pass it, uh, you know, like tables, numbers, strings, whatever you want. You can pass it to the server, you can pass it to the client, and that way the server or client can give each other data that can be used or checked or whatever, right? But whenever you're receiving on the server, the first argument will always be to player. However, when you're using on client event, it does not pass to player automatically. And that's because you have access to local players. So you don't really need the player instance being passed to you on the client, but inside of our, and actually what we do need to do here is the part. So basically tell the, uh, server which part we want to destroy so we do actually need to have our two arguments here because we can't just do part or else part will actually be the player because it's in order right parameters are in order so we have to define our player so that way we can get our part instance and now it's really easy we're just going to destroy our part on the server if i can spell and then we go back to our local script and instead of destroying it what we'll do is I'll actually store replicated storage in a variable here because this is actually better practice and a little bit cleaner. And we'll make a reference to our remote because we're storing the remote in replicated storage, by the way, because uh, the remote, because the client and the server can see replicated storage, that's like a mutual area. So it's a really good place for storing things like remotes. So we want to do remote that destroy part. And now what we want to do is fire server because we want to fire to the server to tell the server that we want it to do something. And then we just pass it the part. You don't need to pass it a player because it automatically sends that to the server. The reason that you don't have to pass the player is because that kind of prevents exploiting because if uh, an exploiter can fire any remote event in your game, right? Which is something you need to take into consideration when you're using remote events is that you shouldn't be trusting uh, just because it's a remote event being fired to the server, you shouldn't trust it because a scripter can fire it as many times as they want, wherever they want, however they want to, and pass whatever information they want to the server. And uh, because the player can't be passed through this, right, it kind of prevents uh, exploiters from kind of uh, firing the remote for other players. So it will always be for themselves because it automatically gives the player to the server and it doesn't, it's not part of the arguments, right? So the way this works is right, it'll fire to the server and it'll fire the part. So it'll give the part that we want to destroy to the server and then the server can take that part and destroy it with our remote event, right? So let's go ahead and try this. So we go ahead and click some parts and they get destroyed. And now if we go ahead and switch over to the server, you'll see that even on the server, the parts are still destroyed. So it destroyed it for everybody in the server and not just us this time. And you can see we destroyed some more and it still works. So that's pretty useful. But now say if we had an exploiter in our game and they just fired their event for pretty much every part in the game just destroyed our entire map. We don't want that, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to add a way of checking a player's permission. So we're gonna see if the player has permission to destroy the part. So that way we can restrict who is able to destroy it and who isn't. So we're just gonna make a table and we're going to call it admins. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to store our user ID in this table. And what this will do, and this is actually gonna be considered an array, right? Because it's not gonna have uh, string indexes, but we're gonna store our user ID in this, and what that'll do is let the server know that we will have permission to destroy the part here. And 
what we can do is just check if we find our ID inside the table. So if table dot find from our uh, and we give it the table we want to find, and then we give it our player's user ID, which will search the table for the user ID and see if it's in there. And then if we do find it, then we'll just destroy the part, right? So we'll go ahead and play, and you'll see it works for us because that is my user ID, right? But if I go in here and I say I want to remove my permissions, I just comment out that line, and they'll say I go back and I go ahead and click, and you can see now I can't destroy any of the parts. We can also add like a debounce on the server to prevent them from destroying parts too quickly and things like that. But this just is another way of checking if they have permission. We can also check to see if the player is close enough to the part to destroy it. So that way they can't just destroy everything. They have to kind of be close enough. And things like this would be called a sanity check. Pretty much checking to see, to make sure that the player is able to do what they want to do with the remote event. And that's very important for securing your game from exploiters. So definitely something you need to do is make sure that secure your remote events on the server with if statements to pretty much check to make sure everything is correct because you can never trust the client so now say inside of my local script i wanted to see if the player had permission obviously we don't need this right now but if i want to check a player's permission inside the local script i could use a remote function and what a remote function is is it really is just a function that it's really a function and we can call it um, on the client and then the server will run the function and return something back to the client pretty much is how the function works so what we'll call this is get admin all right so we have a remote function called get admin and what this will do is we can make a check and ask the server if the player has permission to pretty much uh, run this I mean obviously this isn't going to be a valid check because the player could be an exploiter and they could just fire this remote anyways but it's just an example so it's not meant to really be taken seriously but uh, we can make a variable called is admin and we can set it to equal the result of our remote function call so remotes that get admin dot and then we use invoke server so similar to fire server but instead here it's invoke server and we don't really need to pass any information to the server all we need on the server really is the player which is already passed right so now we can go into the server and we can create our function here which is going to be called by our client so the way a remote function works is it's not actually a proper event, it's actually kind of a callback. And what a callback is, it's not exactly an event, it's pretty much just something that you set equal to a function in like simple terms. So really I should have a uh, replicated storage variable here. Because I'm going to be referencing it multiple times now. And I couldn't have a remote variable as well, but I'm not going to go too crazy. And what we'll do is dot on server evoke. You'll see it's not actually a lightning bolt like an event would be. It's kind of like a little function symbol. And then we set it equal to a function. And it still passes uh, us arguments, so we can still get it inside of our parameter list here for our function. And now all we got to do is... Uh, pretty much return true or false based on whether or not we find them in the table. So this is really easy. We can just do return table.find and what this will do is return either a number or I'll return nail and either way we can kind of use that as a true or false value. Like uh, if it's a number that'd be true, if it's nil it'd be false, right? That's how that works. So now what we'll do is when mouse button one down is we'll print is admin. Uh, I guess. All right, we'll just do print is admin. And the way table that file works is right is it'll return the index that the 
that it find found the value at if it finds the value so it's going to you see print out one because there's only one index but you see it found us in the table so it's printing out one and if I really want to make it a little bit more visual for you I could do something like this where I print one here on the client before we call the invoke and then on the server what we'll do is we'll print two to let you know that it went to the server and then here after the call the function call we can print three just to show you kind of the run pattern so you visually understand a little better i don't think it's that confusing but it should be maybe helpful so you see it prints one first right and then obviously next it prints two because it prints one and then it invokes to the server calling the function that is connected to our uh, remote function it's calling that and then it prints out two you can see that and then it returns our information back to the client and then on the client you can see after the call is done it prints three so it pauses just like a normal function call in a script and you can also see that there's these blue and green bars over here the blue green represents the client and the or the blue the blue uh, bar represents the client and the green bar represents the server and also tells you here and here which uh, whether or not it's on the client or server and the output when it outputs something to the output right it'll tell you if it's on the client or if it's on the server which can be kind of useful to know so I just thought it'd be something I should point out so that's pretty much how remote events and remote functions work you can also uh, fire remotes to the client but in order to do that you need to uh, give the player instance that you want to fire to so we can either so we can do fire client but we need to tell it which client we want to fire to so you have to pass the player argument or the player instance as the first argument when you're firing to the client however on the client event it will not pick up the player as the first argument it won't pass it to the it doesn't actually make it to the client but you just pass it so it knows which uh, client to fire to but you can also use something like fire all clients which will fire to every client in the game and in that case you don't need to give it the player to fire to because it automatically will fire to every client in the game right which is useful for something if you're making like an announcement system or something like that it's very useful and that's just something to keep in mind and if you want to say uh, have a system where you can privately send message to specific players you could use fire client and like uh, send over the message to the client and tell them you know like send that message to that specific player so there's lots of uses for remote functions or remote events very necessary for developing your games I don't I was gonna put like a make your own scripting here but uh I feel like the video went kind of long and I don't want to make it much longer or more complicated than it kind of already is but if you really wanted to make your own script I'm not going to show you a solution because I didn't spend the time to write it out but I think in my dictionary video I went over making a leveling system with a server script uh, what you could do is have a uh, all right, my brain just stopped working. Well, I didn't really show you how to use GUI, so it's not really gonna be a good thing. So we can just skip over that. It doesn't matter, whatever. Uh, <laughs> this is a super scuffed video, but I hope that this was a useful video to help explain remote events and remote functions. I think I did a decent job. Uh, if, I, if I did a bad job, just let me know in the comments and maybe I'll remake the video or something, but I think this isn't too bad. Uh, maybe my editor will work some magic and make it seem not too terrible, but that's it for this video I'll see you in the next one. It's only uphill from here uh, This is a pretty important topic after this. There's a lot of things that you can do so I Can't wait to make some future videos because we're really starting to get into some fun stuff See you in the next video